What's up guys, Filterless here. After seeing viewers comment about 900p, I decided to give it a shot and the results were shocking. So in this video, I'm gonna show y'all how to go from this right here, about 64 average, to this right here, about 75, and even additional performance in some games while still looking extremely sharp. This is probably one of the best changes I've made to the ally across the board. This is like BIOS 323 all over again, pretty much. With this simple tweak, now you can get more battery life, better frames all the way across the board. And so I'm doing this video a little bit different. I'm going to do the games as well as the charts at the end of each game. So on Forza, on the left, we have 720p. Middle is 900. Right is 1080p. Zooming in, if you look closely, you can see 720p on the very far left is a little bit blurry if you look around the window and door. And then 900p is getting definitely clear and 1080 is obviously the most clear. Let's go ahead and zoom in to 300 here and you can see the differences even more. If you look at the doors and the window frame and the textures overall, you can see 900p and 1080p are pretty close to each other. 720p definitely has a bit more blurriness and 900 a little more than 1080 jumping straight over to the benchmarks once again it's always going to be 720p 900p 1080p on the right and i just did driving for this it's a little more fun and it's real world results obviously it depends a little depending on where you're at but if you look we're getting 70 60 ish right now in the middle versus 50 on the right with 1080p and it doesn't look visually too much different if you look at it now 720p is definitely a little more muddied up but the difference in 900 and 1080 is very close and so wrapping this benchmark up you can see at 1080p we got 57 for the averages we got 66 at 900p that's a 16 percent fps increase and then going from 900 to 720 that's another 15 from 900 to 720 so we're actually getting a bigger performance bump going from 1080 to 900 then 900 all the way to 720p which surprised me quite a bit moving on to dirt rally 2 we're high quality preset and here's a quick graphics comparison before we zoom in you can see on the left a little blurry but let's go ahead and zoom in and now if we look at the audi logo on the back of the car the rings you can see it gets slightly clear as we go to the right and 720 definitely is a little bit blurrier zooming in again if we look at that sign in the background you can just see the clarity is a little bit better on the 900 and then 1080 as well. But what matters more is the actual benchmark. So for this, I'm just driving around, messing around a little bit, and it's about one minute and 30 seconds of driving, and then I freeze it. But as you can see, even in the warehouse, we're getting about 70 and only about 55, 60 on the right with 1080p. So 900p is definitely making a huge difference here. And wrapping up this benchmark, you can see we're at 54 for the average at 1080. We got a 20% bump in those averages at 900p and then going from 900 to 720, 23. However, staying in the 65 range over 54 really makes a difference at 17 watts. That's what we're at. So when you're on battery, it's going to give you that additional bump in performance and it's very noticeable. So next we have crisis let's just start out at that 200 zoom just so we can see immediately you have 720 on the left 900p 1080p and it is a bit clear on 1080 but 900 is pretty close and then if we zoom in a little more 720 you can definitely see the difference so it's just like stairs that are stepping up to that higher quality and then benchmarking crisis if you look at the fps up at the top we're at about 50 ish on 900p 30 it was just at 34 at 1080p so we're getting a nice bump in this already and then wrapping up the crisis benchmark we got 29 percent additional performance on average going from 1080 to 900p and this is at 17 watts again so battery playability you can even knock it down maybe a little more and get around high 40s which is still playable and then at 720p we're at about 68 moving on to grand theft auto 5 we're running pretty much high settings 1080p and this is a little less noticeable but you can definitely see if you look at the sign at the top left it does get slightly clearer as we go to the right 
let's go ahead and just jump right into that benchmark and you can see we're at about 77 in the middle versus 63 on the right that's a huge difference and it's noticeable in the game for sure even though 60 is still great getting closer to 70 is awesome and then at 720p we're definitely getting a pretty high fps and wrapping up the GTA 5 benchmark, we got about 22% more performance going down to 900p, which is quite the bump. And in those 1% and 0.1%, that's quite a bit higher. In fact, our 1% are almost the averages on 1080p. So at 900p, we're getting 57 for the 1%, and for the averages, we're getting 58 at 1080p. Jumping onto Cyberpunk, just running the default medium preset. So here I decided to just look at the tower for the graphics comparison. Let's go ahead and zoom in a little bit and you can definitely see the differences. In fact, 1080 is looking a bit more clear than even 900 and 720 on the left. If we zoom in a little bit further, you can definitely see that slight difference there all the way across the board. But let's go ahead and check out the benchmark numbers. And as you can see right here, just driving, we're getting about 40 in the middle versus about 37 on the right. Now it's 45 versus 38. So quite a decent bump between 900 and 1080. And I have 720 on the left as a reference. So this video is mainly about 900 and wrapping up the cyberpunk benchmark. We got about a 19% increase in FPS going from 36 to 43. A nice bump in those 1%, 25 to 32. And then 720p from 900p is 26%. So if you want to get in the 50s, that is definitely the way to go. Moving on to Skyrim, we're just doing the medium preset here. And here we can see a little difference, but let's go ahead and just zoom in. So here we are zoomed in a little bit, and this is a little harder to see the differences, but if you look closely, it's pretty similar as the past results. We're getting a bit clearer as we move up. And zooming in even further, you can see 720p, especially where the tree is and all the way up at Bleak Falls Barrow, definitely a bit blurrier. And then 900 is pretty clear and 1080 gets that little bit of extra clarity. So let's go ahead and benchmark this one. And this is a game that makes a huge difference. I played this and 900p is such a better experience to stay around 60 over on the right. You can see we're dipping down into that 40s and we're actually going out of the free sync range to that low frame compensation range which is below 48 hertz and it's slightly noticeable so being able to stay above it makes a big difference i was enjoying playing this game earlier it was a blast at 900p on battery at 17 watts and wrapping up the skyrim benchmark you can see we got a 26 percent bump in this game which is awesome so we went from 50 all the way to 63 for those averages and then if you go down to 720p it's such a high frame rate you really don't even need to go there, but you do get an additional 25% from 900 to 720. Jumping into Insurgency Sandstorm, we're doing the medium preset. And I thought this would be a good spot to test graphics here at the range. You can see the roof and distant materials, and you can definitely see a difference going from left to right here and even in the gun. So we zoom into 300 and it's a little harder to tell, but if you look at the grass in the background, you can see it's really blurry on the left. It gets pretty clear at 900 and then even clear at 1080 on the right. But let's go ahead and benchmark this one. And you can see running down the road, we're at about 56 in the middle versus 47 on the right. So a decent bump and the quality is pretty close. And then wrapping this benchmark up, we got about a 17%, so not as noticeable in this game, but 47 up to that 55 range. A lot of these, it's just getting out of the 40s and into the 50s and 60s that you really see that difference when you're playing in handheld. And this is at 17 watts again. Jumping over to ARC, we're running medium with the resolution scale turned all the way up. In here, it's pretty noticeable without zooming in, but let's go ahead and just zoom in. So here we are zoomed in. You can definitely see a difference in the trees from the left going all the way to the right as before, as we've seen in the previous games, zooming in even further. And 91080 seem a lot closer than 720 to 900. And wrapping up the arc benchmark, we got about 26 to 33. That still might not be playable. You might want to knock some settings down or go down to 720p, but that's a 27% increase. In fact, our 1% at 900p are higher than our averages at 1080. And that makes a big difference when you're playing the game. 
All right, jumping over to a new section. We're just doing 900 to 1080. I wanted to get y'all as many results as possible. And this is Black Ops at medium settings. Black Ops 3. We're going to be playing some zombies. And we've got 900p on the left. 1080p on the right this will help y'all see it a little better and this is the comparison that matters probably the most to most people so just running around it's looking about 15 fps or so increase and wrapping up the black ops 3 we got a pretty big bump going from 53 to 72 36 or so percent increase i did notice it lagging in some weird places so this might be slightly off but a pretty decent bump across the board moving over to generation zero jumping straight into the benchmark this is at medium settings across the board just the quality preset in here we're just running out to the end we're going to look at the water but we're getting about 10 more fps this is another game i play and it makes a big difference so here wrapping this one up 42 to 55 our 1% at 900 are higher than the averages at 1080 this was a game I didn't like at 1080 but I also didn't like knocking it all the way down to 720 which I'm sure a lot of y'all experience so here we're getting that 31% additional performance and it is an awesome experience and this is running at 25 watts because this game does not like lower watts moving on to Metro Exodus we're running very high with these settings and here just starting out on the ladder with that first cutscene, 62 versus 44 42 on the left so that's a pretty big difference we're talking about almost 20 fps here and take a look at the graphics do y'all see a huge difference between them it's really close and when you're on handheld it's even closer that's the thing that's so crazy about 900p that makes it such a great option you can see we're hitting 100 fps on the left versus about 60 on the right and then right here when he opens this door if you look at the frames i'm gonna freeze it for a second as soon as he opens his door and take a look at that 44 on the right versus 62 on the left that's a huge difference i could notice it lagging quite a bit on the right when i was playing so 900p makes this game a lot better and wrapping this benchmark up 44 percent which is insane we are at 25 watts so maybe we get a little bit more of an increase when we give it slightly more watts but 52 to 75 are 0.1 percent are close to the averages at 1080p going from 1080 to 900p that is a statement to just how good it is moving on to resident evil we're running the recommended settings but i turned off fidelity super resolution it muddies the image up a little too much for me this is another game that i noticed a big difference when playing going down to 900 and not in graphics but in that frame rate we're in the lower 40s on the right right now versus almost 60 on the left it kind of varies here and there but staying around that 60 even if you look at the two images it's smoother on the left look at this turn and it's just much smoother when you're actually playing so as we go in here we're ending the benchmark i just freeze it right here and wrapping that up about a 30 percent increase from 48 to 62 once again the one percent averages at 900p almost caught the averages for 1080p so that is a really great bump even look at the top of the fps while we're paused 59 on the right 77 on the left that's amazing Moving on to another game I like a lot, The Division. We're running the medium preset. In here, we're just running around. I'm staying in front of the building, and it's just back to back to make sure we're getting similar weather and everything else. And you can see it's almost a 10% increase, which is another game that makes a difference. And this is at 17 watts. So if you're playing on battery, you can't even play this at lower watts really without it lagging, unless you want to try to lower settings down. But if you switch it to 900, you can enjoy a medium preset and just enjoy playing the game at 17 watts. In here, wrapping the benchmark up, we can see it's about 22% percent going from 41 to 50 now one percent and point ones this game seems to stutter a lot more especially in the lower watt range and just in general but getting that 22 extra percent going to 900 is really awesome moving on to the witcher we're running the medium preset with everything set as default on that preset and for this we're just running around real quick but even playing at 900p the experience is great you'll really like it and look at 25 watts we're in the 40s but we're down in the 30s with that 1080 so wrapping this one up we went from 32 to 45 and you can even see it at the top we're at 35 and at 46 on the left 41 percent increase in performance that is huge our one percent at 900p are beating the averages 
at 1080p once again. So just an overall huge bump. Moving on to another game, Monster Hunter World, we're running the high preset. This is another game where it's noticeable and even at 900p, it could be slightly too low in FPS. As you see going up the steps though, now we're approaching that 50 FPS versus in the 30s or around 40 or so. And that's a big difference at those lower frame rates. That's a pretty big increase, even though it doesn't look like it as much. To stay in the 40s over the 30s is really great though. And then wrapping up the Monster Hunter World benchmark, you can see we went from 35 to 44 and our 1% are 37 at 900p versus 35. So we got about a 26% increase in the averages and those 1% are actually beating the average at 1080p, which is huge. So moving on to the tutorial, I actually found this registry file and I looked through it and it adds a bunch of custom resolutions. I'm not even going to try pronouncing this name, but shout out to this individual in the GBD discord. I don't think I'm a part of that. I will also have this link as well as I uploaded it to Google Drive just in case something happens with this link. And I just wanted to show y'all before I install it. If we look, we only have that 1080p to 720. And here's the file. We simply double click on it, click on run, click yes, and then we restart the computer. Now this is adding stuff to the registry, so you have to click yes. I looked through the file. I haven't noticed any ill effects or anything wrong with it, but we're gonna get a bunch of extra display resolutions. However, you see it hasn't taken effect yet, so we gotta restart our computer first. Now once you restart, going back in display settings, look at all of these resolutions. Now. I have even gone into that registry file and tried to remove a lot of these I didn't like before adding it. And for whatever reason, it's still added all these. So I'm not sure exactly why that's happening. So if you install it, you are gonna get all those resolutions. However, if you open Skyrim, it's kind of cool because it pulls all the 16 by nines and you can see all the options we have. We got 1080p, 990p, 900p. We have 768, that 720p, as well as that 634p in there. So if you wanna go below 720, you can also do that. So we get a lot of options for tailoring our experience per game. And one last thing to note, if you are running 900p on the desktop and you go to open Armory Crate, you will see these sliders down here. I think it was specifically built for 1080p and 720p. As you can see here, even though it shows 720, we're at 900, but as soon as we toggle this, we will go to 1080 and we toggle it again and we'll go back to 720p and you can see Armory Crate just readjusted. Also, when you are running 900p in a game, it's going to show 720 and you don't want to touch this or else it's going to bump it to 1080 and then probably pull it down to 720. So you just want to make sure you're set at 900p in game. You should be good to go. And for the desktop, I'd recommend just running at 1080p. The only time you might need to use this 900p is if there's a certain game that you need at 900p that runs a windowed full screen and for whatever reason won't scale down properly from 1080 to 900. And here I wanted to throw a quick chart together for y'all. We got about 27% across the board additional performance just going from 1080 down to 900p. And you can see here all the different games. The ones where it made the biggest difference was definitely that Metro Exodus, The Witcher 3, Black Ops 3, and Crisis. The ones where it didn't matter as much would be Insurgency at 17%, Horizon 5, but I noticed that, I love that game. It definitely made a difference and that's one of the lowest numbers and it still made a bit of a difference to me. So all these other ones are even greater than that. And if you made it this far, I wanted to throw a little bonus together just to show y'all some of the actual differences between radon image sharpening, it makes a huge difference. So here we're on Fable and zooming in, you can see we have 1080p on the right and 900p with RIS. And you can see the difference in the image in RIS, radon image sharpening is something you can actually adjust that sharpness. So I personally leave it on the default at 80%. I'll have a tutorial right after this, but look how sharp it is. It looks great. And then here we have 900p with RIS on on the left versus 900p with it off. And you would think this is a completely different resolution. It almost looks like 720p on the right and we're getting 1080p plus on the left just by turning RIS on and there's zero performance impact. Here we have both of them off just to give you a better look at 900p versus 1080 
and it looks pretty close it's definitely a bit clearer at 1080p here we're on resident evil 2 once again we have ras on the on on the left versus off on the right and you can see the film effect is kind of it's picking that up a little bit more but if we took the film effect off it wouldn't be as noticeable but it's a bit clearer on the left versus the right then here's crisis and it is more pixelated on the left but we have 900p ras on on the left versus 1080p ras off on the right here we have ras on on, on both and 1080p is definitely clear but man 900p is really sticking pretty close and then here's the real kicker 900p on both ras is on on the left versus off on the right i think that's a huge difference and almost looks like a completely different resolution on the right versus the left and once again here is dirt rally with 900p on the left 1080p on the right the only difference ris is on on the left versus it being off on the right and i actually prefer the left for sure right here than the right however as soon as we turn ras on on 1080p you can see it's even sharper than 900p on the left now take a look at this 1080p on both but it definitely doesn't look that way it looks like we're running 720p on the left but the only difference is ras is off on the left it's on on the right this is 1080p on both that's how big of a difference this makes all right, to turn on RIS, you're just going to hit that Armory Crate button to bring up Armory Crate. If you don't have Armory Crate enabled because you're using something like G Helper, I'll show you the second method here in a second. Up here at the top, we're going to go to Settings. And then over here on the right for Command Center, you're going to click Add on one of these buttons. And then you're going to scroll down. It's not RSR. We want RIS, which is down here. So you're going to click on this and then it will be in command center. If you think the default settings look good, then you can just turn it on and off right here. However, if you don't have command center or you want to adjust the sharpness, then what we're going to need to do is you can click down here on this arrow and open up the AMD adrenaline software by double clicking on this. Or as always, click on your start menu button and you can open it up by clicking AMD software. So just type that in. And once AMD is open, you're going to make sure you just click this gear icon. So we're on the same screen. You're going to head over to graphics and you're going to scroll down a little ways and we'll see it right here and we can enable it and disable it here or in command center. And if you don't like how sharp it was looking, then what you can do is just drop this down a little. You might want to try 50, maybe 40, find a percent that works good for you. And like I said before, there's zero performance impact. In fact, RIS is so good that I would take 900p with RIS on over 1080p with it off. That would be my actual preference for which one I would choose over the other if the performance was the same. One thing to note is just make sure it is on before you launch a game. And here's the cool thing. Let's go ahead and launch a game. So for this, I'll just start up Dirt Rally 2.0. And here you can see I'm running 900p, which is what I've actually been switching most of my games to. So we went ahead and opened up Command Center and take a look on the right at the Dirtfish sign and the Shop sign and watch this. We turn it off and on. Look at the difference. There's off, on, off, on. That's a huge difference. It really does make it look like 1080p and a little bit better in my opinion with that 80% sharpness. Anyway guys, just to sum it up, I use RIS on with 900p in almost all the games I play now because of how good it looks. 900p is a huge step up from 720 in graphics. If you look at the game we're playing now, it looks like we're playing 1080p. And with this, you'll be able to reduce the amount of watts you need to throw at the system or just increase your FPS across the board and even slightly both. You could actually reduce watts and still outperform 1080p in FPS. If you did enjoy the video, make sure to hit the like, hit the sub, and I will see you on the next one. Peace.